to celebrate life. Amen. Thank God for that. At this time, serve your name.
or as usual, those that are on that down the road, let it preach till they get on the down the road. Oh God, let it preach to this the ears for me and hear your word. Because you say your word, let not your heart be troubled. Oh God, you just won't take it. Thank you, sir. Because you say your way, you're coming back one day. Come back to the church without a spot on my Oh God, help me not have the spots. Help me not have the right to be. Give me my sandwich. Oh God, we just want to tell you thank you, sir. You've been good to us. And you've always been good to us. Oh God, how are you doing? Oh God, we're going to tell our last song. Great on that. You see us so high like that. All I can tell for you. You can pray for your name.
bless your hearts. We join with the defense and say thank you as we have gone through our devotional part of this service. It comes now for time for remarks. I don't see y'all preaching. Bishop. Reverend. Deaconess. On behalf of the St. John Church family and the community, These are just some of the attributes that Brother Bob had within the church family and the community. Amen. As we all know, Brother Bob possesses the gift of help. Brother Bob was involved in most of everything that goes on in the church and community. That was just the type of person that he was. Amen. Just to name a few, we talked about the men's fellowship. Bob was a band driver. Bob was involved with senior workshop. Food distribution. Mail cores. Homeless shelter. Yard work. Anniversary Commission. Mm -hmm. Bob was a key player in all these ministries. Amen. Brother Bob loved his church family. Yes, he did. And his community. Yes. Anything that was asked of Bob, anything that was asked of Bob, Bob would do it. Yes, he Even for the community. Yeah, yeah. So with that being said, I can sit here and talk and talk and talk. Because of the person that he was. But I'm going to leave you with this thought. And let this thought carry on. As a part of his legacy. There's a lot of people. 
same size shoe that Bob wore. <coughs> but you can search the world all over. But there is no one that will be able to feel his shoe. Amen. And I'm going to live with that. So the St. John Church family in the community will be proud of the legacy that Brother Bob has left behind. Thank you. Amen.
already know that was first class. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, and, and to all that be said, I'm, I'm, I'm here for the family. My wife and I is here for her being a widow. We are here to support her and be there for her as she needs us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are letting her know we're there for I met the sisters and the brothers, and I got to meet his mom. And a lot of, a lot of people I learned through mom. You know, so um, his big brother Wallace here, I, I, I just got to, I felt like part of the family. You know, because of him, I got to, to come and feel that part of St. John's family. You know, he, the, the food bank, uh, they, they called him, at the food bank, they called him Deacon Cruz. Yes. And, uh, but you hear him calling a lot of good things yes. because of his personality Ada, Ada. and how he was and what he did. Ada. Thank you, Lord.
born of a woman is a few days in full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. Job 14, verses 1 and 2. We, the pastors, members of St. John, Missionary Baptist Church, are heartbroken at the loss of our member. Brother Bobby Purvis, could you pass on December the 21st, 2022? Um, God, in his infinite wisdom, dispatched an angel to come and relieve him from all pain, worry, and suffering, and he slept into a peaceful rest. Whereas Brother Bobby was a member of this church for many years and served in many auxiliaries, as you have heard so many of the ones mentioned, we can't mention them all, at least I didn't on this page. He sang in the choirs, the senior male chorus, was the president and organizer of the Brothers in Unity unity in which they would have programs on a yearly basis. And in that program, he would always invite at least six other five, six churches to take part. But he loved <coughs> the brothers in unity as well as the mill force. Um, and that happened until COVID-19. He was a food bank coordinator, worked with lawn, the lawn service, he worked with the van, and a few things in which I did not mention, but as was said, he was a busy person. He lived a wonderful life, a wonderful and full life, and never met a stranger. Bobby was an inspiration to all who knew him, a great role model and mentor to children and young people. And any time a child was present, well, leave him on, come on, I got it.
father-in-law and grandfather, Brother Bobby Williams. We want the family to know that we share with your family today as you mourn the loss of your loved one. At, as difficult as it may be just now, try to remember with joy and gratitude the life you shared together. Reflect on the many years you, you had together and the fact that God has passed them in his people. Brother Bobby has served God, his family, friends, and community with dignity, love, respect, and unselfishness. He was compassionate, dedicated, and committed to whatever he had to do. We pray that the, the divine comforter will bring peace to your heart, uplift up your spirit, and carry you through this time of sadness. May you find consolation in knowing that Brother Bobby Glenn Curtis now walks with God. To the family we say, we be encouraged. For as Brother Bobby heads home, his happiness will be complete. Be assured that he has already awakened to a newness that none of us can imagine. That which seems to be death to us is the beginning of life to the heavenly company who awaits his arrival. We pray for your continued faith and strength in the Lord. May he be close to you now, comfort you, and enfold you with his love. Time cannot steal the treasured memories that you carry in your heart. Prayerfully submitted, Reverend Dr. Ronald E. Avery, Pastor, First Lady Addie M. Avery, and St. Matthew, Christian Baptist Church family. Of Bobby Glenn Purvis was born on September 18, 1951, in Pitt County to the late Wallace T. and Adams Purvis. He was united in holy matrimony to the love of his life, Doretha Clemens Purvis, on April 24, 1971. To this union, two children were born. He departed his life peacefully on Wednesday, December 21, 2022 at ECU Health in Greenville, North Carolina. He gave his life to Christ and was a faithful servant of St. John Missionary Baptist Church Soul Saving Center in Stokes, North Carolina. Bob graduated from Bethel Union High School in Bethel, North Carolina. After graduating, he served in the United States Army. After his enlistment ended, he returned home to Greenville, North Carolina. He had multiple jobs before he held his final job as a property manager for Blunt Law Firm in Greenville, North Carolina. He was an active member of St. John Missionary Baptist Church, Soul City Center, where he sang in the Mass Choir and the Middle Forest, was a member of the support ministry, a devout member of the food ministry, and would do anything to support the work of the church, including maintaining the church grounds. Bobby was a charismatic man with a smile and laugh that could light up a room. He got along with everyone and told the best jokes. He was a giving person and was always willing to help those in need in his community. He was an outdoorsman who loved fishing and hunting. He also enjoyed bowling, watching sports, and quartet music. He was a phenomenal cook and brother. Bobby was preceded in death by his parents, Wallace T. Purvis and Agnes Purvis, and 
his brothers, Alton Jenkins and Gerald Tony Purvis. Bobby leaves his wife for 51 years, Doretha Purvis, and two children to cherish his memory. Marcus Purvis Sr., Reverend Dr. Tracy Thomas Purvis of Raleigh, North Carolina, and Veronica Renee Purvis of the home. His three grandchildren, Marcus Purvis Jr., a junior at North Carolina State University, Marcus Purvis, a freshman at North Carolina A&T State University, and Michael Purvis, a junior at Lee's Monroe High School. His brothers, Wallace Purvis Jr. of Falkland, North Carolina, and Joseph T. Purvis, Carolyn of Greenville, North Carolina. His sisters, Joyce Carolyn Purvis of Greenville, North Carolina, Bruno Marie Payne, James of Alexandria, Virginia, Agnes P. Clemens of Robinsonville, North Carolina, Brenda Faye Purvis of Williamson, North Carolina, Deborah Lynn Clay and the Osis of Raleigh, North Carolina, and Barbara Michelle Purvis of Canal, Winchester, Ohio. His uncle, George Smith, Linda of Williamson, North Carolina. His brothers-in-law, Ernest Clemens, Joanne of Greenville, North Carolina. Edward Clemens, Doris of Stokes, North Carolina. And Carlton Clemens of Bethel, North Carolina. And sister-in-law, Dorothy Clemens of Alexandria, Virginia. A host of nieces, nephews, cousins, other relatives, and friends are also left to cherish his memory. A limb has fallen. A limb has fallen from the family tree. I keep hearing a voice that says, Read not for me. Remember the best times, the laughter, the song, the good life I lived while I was strong. Continue my heritage. I'm counting on you. Keep smiling, and surely the sun will shine through. My mind is at ease. My soul is at rest, remembering all how I truly was blessed. Continue traditions, no matter how small. Go on with your life. Don't worry about falls. I miss you all dearly, so keep up your chin. Until the day comes, we're together again. Acknowledgement. The family would like to acknowledge with grateful hearts their appreciation for all acts of love and kindness shown to them at this time of bereavement, especially your prayers. May God forever bless each of you. And the family would also like to thank Congress and Funeral Home and Cremation Services for the excellent job that you've done to take care of our loved ones. May you all be blessed.
was already done and we thank God for that. We've been praying, asking God to give us a word. Uh, at this time and this season here, but you have to realize and understand the earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot gain and God is too wise to make a mistake. All of us today is hurt. Uh, we are human and we are hurt about our loss and our loved one. And my mind went back probably 21, 22 years. Uh, I did his brother's funeral, been 20 some years at that swamp church. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty for you. Please ask him. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. It's a little time. But today, we're going all over to the last book of the Bible. We're going to the book of Revelation. Just for a few minutes, amen. Don't be along with me, son. The way up there, but be along with me. We'll get right out of your way, amen. We need your prayer songs today. Revelation, thank you. Let's give it up for Revelation. Let's do something tomorrow. From Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Just want to read about four verses. Uh, from verses 8 through 10. Uh, and unto the angels of the church in Swan, right? These things says the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and promise, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say that they are Jews and are not, but the synagogue of Satan. Verse 10. Fear none of these things, which fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. This is the last call from Brother Paul and everybody is here. Be thou faithful unto them. And I will give thee a crown of righteousness. If you want to deal with the last cloth, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. I want to preach from a sentence today. If you be faithful, if you be faithful. If is a conjunction word. If you be faithful is one thing. And if you do not be faithful is something else. If you live holy is one thing. If you do not live holy is something else. If you receive Jesus as your Savior is one thing. If receive him is another thing. If you repent is one thing. If you do not is another thing. If if you be faithful. The Bible let us know in, in Revelation chapter 2 it talks about a church called Smarm. And this was a church that was uh, a beautiful place, uh, a profitable place. They say they were rich with the mouth, but in the heart there was something else going on down on the inside. But the word that they won't let us know, he said, well, I, I know your works. I, I know your, your works and your tribulation. I know you're going through some things. There were some saved folks and unsaved at the same time. But he would let me, he would let us know that some of these Jews are trying you. They're, they're carrying you through difficult times. But he said, I'm, I want you to be faithful even though you're going through difficult times. Said that to say this, we all, all have some trying. We all have some tribulation that we're going through. But God wants us to be faithful. Even though the COVID may come this way, but God still wants us to be faithful. 
He went on and told him, he said, I, I am the first and I, I am the last. By the way, you know you're talking about Jesus Christ. He said, I am the first and I am the last. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am him, he that was dead but alive forevermore. Yes, he went on and told him, he said, I, I, I know your works. Amen. God knows about God about works. Gee, we, we can say one thing with our lip, but our heart can say something else. But God, man looks on the outer appearance, but God looks at our heart. And he said, I, I know your works. I, I, I know your tribulation. I, I know your poverty thing that you're going through talking about the same one now. He said, but thou art rich. In other words, if you have to accept Jesus, as your personal Savior, you are rich. Amen. If you're saved, you're sanctified. If you're Holy Ghost fear, you are rich. But even though that you're saved, you're not exempted from trial. You're not exempted from service. And, and sometimes we think because we, we have joined the church and joined the choir and, and we can quote a few scriptures that we're exempted from sickness. But sickness and trials and tribulations are come to all our doors. come to your door, you need to be faithful. Even though regardless of what you're going through, you need to be faithful. Even our friend, our brother Bob, even though he, he was faithful before sickness struck his body. But even though when the sickness struck his body, Bob was still being faithful. Amen. The Bible talks about a faithful man is hard to find. What God wants us to have, wants us to be faithful. Verse 10 goes on and said, but I tell y'all, he said, but fear none of those things that will happen to you. In other words, the Lord said, even though you're going through persecution, don't worry about it. Even though you're having difficult times, don't worry about it. In other words, he said, some of you will be thrown into prison and you will be tried and you will have tribulation. And you, but he said, maybe 10 days you will be going through. Through some, it's just a dual race thing. In other words, but our light affliction is just for a moment. I mean, I don't think this is. Well, all the things that we're going through now is going to be over after a while. And after a while, all of this will, will be done away with. But you will have to be faithful, not just for a little while, not just for a season, but you will have to be faithful unto them. I mean, know sometimes we have to suffer sometimes. But when you know that God is on the inside, you say, well, if I just can hold out until tomorrow. Yeah, you, you, you may have to cry sometimes, and you may be going through some things in your life, but I come by to let you know we're going to have to be faithful. Yeah, I mean, faithful in the good times, and faithful in the bad times, and times when we understand, and, and times when we do not understand, we're still going to have to be faithful. Yeah, you don't have to be faithful when people are with you and you have to be faithful when people are not with you. You have to be faithful when family and friend walks away from you. You still have to be faithful. I just wish I had just a, a few faithful to you. Just so they 
a pat on the back. I, I don't want nobody pat me on the back. Now, God going to pay me. If you want to pay me, God in our trial and our tribulation. We need to be faithful in the storms of life. Storms going to come in all of our life. Let me try one time. We need to be faithful in the storm of our life. There will come some storm in all of our life. But when the storm comes, God wants us to be faithful even in the pulpit. God wants us to be faithful reading, faithful studying, Faithful praying, faithful witness, faithful preaching the word of God. So therefore, a faithful man is hard to find. But God can look for you and I to be faithful through all seasons. Some would be faithful when the sun is shining. But now God wants us to be faithful even when the sun is not shining. In order, in order, word for, in order for you to be faithful, you have to have a faithful spirit. Until you have a faithful spirit, you will never be faithful. I want you to have a witness here. And everybody in the church there wants you to pay them for everything you do. Oh, 
that you think that he cannot use. He said, Paul, Paul said word like this. He said, I am the chief of sinners. When the Lord got to working on him, he was a faithful man. I got a witness in hell. I did sin now. He was trying to go on the road or to Nashville's house. He was blind as a bat tat. But the Lord got through it in there. He said,
friends that have traveled from afar and near. I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of this family to say thank you to each and every one for all acts of kindness shown to them during this that time of loss and bereavement. I'm sure they would have me say to you, may God riches blessings be upon each and every one. To the family on behalf of myself and Sonia and the rest of the staff that come from your home, we'd like to say thank you for allowing us to be here for you today. We hope that we've done something in some way because of that, we'd like to present you with this token of our appreciation. We call it the Memorial Day. Wow. At this time, we'll prepare for our viewing. The family has requested sanctuary. We ask you when you leave the sanctuary, you will go to your cars, turn on your lights and flashes, and we will get you in line. And turn will take place in the Robertsonville Memorial Gardens. Again, we say thank you. <coughs> Yesterday, you found people like a bunch of 